Welcome to PB Tech Newscast. I'm Phil Bouchard. Coming up on this week's programme, module prices predicted to carry on falling in 2012. Tough market conditions are continuing to impact PB manufacturers, and we have exclusive access to First Solar's new thin film factory in Arizona. Solar module factory gate prices are claimed to be down 33% year-on-year and will fall a further 18% in the fourth quarter of 2011, according to the latest SolarBuzz quarterly report. Overcapacity is continuing to take its toll on PV module prices, as SolarBuzz warns that module inventory levels could reach almost 22 gigawatts by the end of next year if production is not cut back drastically by approximately 11 gigawatts. The backdrop for the supply and demand imbalance is installation levels that are proving to be weaker than expected. According to the market research firm, European markets are projected to account for 58% of global demand in the third quarter of 2011, down from 78% in the same quarter last year. However, market emphasis is now shifting, especially to the US and China. The report states that these two nations are seeing the fastest rates of growth among major markets in the third quarter. With cell capacity expected to increase by 50% over 2011 levels, SolarBuzz says that market conditions can only get worse. In related news, investment bank Jefferies equity analyst Jesse Pischel said in a research note that channel checks of tier one and two China-based module manufacturers had indicated that many were running at approximately 50% utilization rates due to overcapacity and weak demand. With respect to tier three producers, Jefferies said that some have effectively stopped production and shut down plants. Pichel characterised the market demand conditions as anemic, noting that demand elasticity was now seen as a function of macro sentiment and credit availability, rather than the normal investor rate of return, which were at their highest levels thanks to the falling prices and currently high feed-in tariffs. Pichel believes that further capacity will be shuttered in China on the back of a prolonged weakness in market demand. The market will see consolidation, but rather than through mergers and acquisitions, it will happen by attrition, making the top 15 PV manufacturers stronger and create a less volatile market in the future. A resumption of volume and revenue and earnings growth is now expected to return in 2013, being led by grid parity in some European countries, as well as California, Hawaii and Japan. Tough market conditions are continuing to impact PV manufacturers. Norway's REC is considering the permanent closure of older production plants in light of the continuing decline in wafer and cell prices. Warren Major has been taking a closer look at the story. REC announced in May this year that it would be suspending multi-crystalline wafer production at its Haroya and Glumford plants as well as solar cell production at its Narvik facility. Continued downward pressure on prices had meant that keeping the plants open was uneconomical. A decision will be made on the permanent plant closures with the publication of the company's third quarter results on October the 26th. Approximately 700 employees are expected to be affected by the potential shutdowns. Should the closures go ahead, REC would be cutting 775 megawatts of annual wafer capacity or 45% of REC's wafer capacity in Norway. It would also effectively cut 180 megawatt of social cell capacity. REC reiterated that other plants in Norway and Singapore remain at full capacity. After several years of aggressive capacity expansions, market conditions are also impacting equipment suppliers. Reporting recently from EU PVSEC, equipment suppliers recognised a shift in PV manufacturers' purchasing behaviour. Senior news editor Mark Osborne talked to two major equipment suppliers, Applied Materials and Meyerberger, about the shift to a technology buy phase. We're in a tough situation. There's no question that the, the market's been very hard uh, on the industry in, in the first half of this year. Are you saying that we're talking about specific technology buys uh, of equipment that actually uh, you're not changing lines, you're not completely replacing lines, but you're adding in a certain um, tool or a process that requires just an upgrade or, or a full replacement of a tool to boost, you know, to give those extra cell efficiency gains? This is at the moment exactly true. The discussion goes for efficiency gains 
I think capacity at the moment is enough in the market. So this is not a question. It's a question how the, uh, our customer are able to survive on the cost or price base we have in the market now. And if they have to replace to be competitive any, uh, again, they have to go for uh, later technology. Right now, our customers in the entire industry is going through major change. Prices are dropping very rapidly. They're dropping throughout the chain. And wafers prices in particular have been dropping about 40% in the last three to six months. So really rapid fall. So what's needed right now for our customers is short-term help that can quickly and easily be upgraded to their existing install base. So we're looking at uh, providing to our customers a series of uh, upgraded capability that can lower, in particular, consumables cost. Consumables cost is, right now, the biggest piece uh, of the overall wafer stack transformation cost in the, in the wire saws. So if, if uh, suppliers, OEM equipment manufacturers can provide to them solutions to lower and rapid solutions that can be implemented in days once the upgrade is issued, when the upgrade is released, then you really have something customers need. Um, so in that area, we're working both on squaring and wafering with wire technology upgrades. Uh, that will mean 10, 20% reduction in consumables cost. Um, and that, I think, is what's needed right now. As recently reported, the US utility project pipeline has grown from 17 gigawatts to 24 gigawatts this year, according to SolarBuzz. The positive knock-on effect is the expansion of module capacity by a leading manufacturer of modules, First Solar. PV Tech's senior editor in the US, Tom Cheney, gained exclusive access to First Solar's Mesa, Arizona CADTEL Thin Film Factory, which will be one of the largest PV manufacturing plants so far built in the US, with production expected to kick off in the third quarter of 2012. With its framework structure erect and the first walls attached, the shell is quickly rising from the desert floor. The contractor team, led by global engineering and construction firm M&W Group, is building the nearly million square foot, $300 million facility for First Solar and is designed to accommodate as many as 10 production lines. When the plant becomes operational, First Solar estimates that it will employ 600 full-time manufacturing associates there. The full insight into the building project can be seen in Tom's Chipshot blog on the PV Tech website. And finally, after weeks of silence, the UK's Department of Energy and Climate Change has at long last announced that the consultation on extensions to the large-scale feed-in tariff has ended, with the previous loophole now closed. While a number of companies had already taken advantage of the loophole by installing what they could in the time frame left in the wake of the fast track review, this news puts a final stop to all those hoping to achieve larger scale installations under the higher feed in tariff rates after October the 18th. This change means that those developers who have tried to register and receive accreditation have been frustrated by the off gem backlog may still have a chance to benefit from the higher rates. Greg Barker, the UK's Energy and Climate Change Minister, will be speaking at the upcoming Solar Power UK conference in Birmingham on October the 27th, where he will outline the government's roadmap for a greener future. That's it for another PV Tech newscast. Don't forget to read Chipshot's blog on the website. Thanks for watching.